Which, oh, I'll introduce myself and then Melissa, if you want to introduce yourself and we'll jump in. Um, my name is Olivia Marsh. I'm the manager of educator engagement and professional development at the Henry Ford, which is in Dearborn, Michigan, just outside Detroit. We are a cultural institution and museum with several venues. Uh, we have about 26 million artifacts in our collection. So just, you know, a handful of things. And it's a really, really wide ranging collection. So we have everything from cars and planes and automo uh, yeah, automobiles, uh, buildings, like part of Menlo Park, Thomas Edison's laboratory, uh, Henry Ford's birthplace. We're acquiring a new building as we speak from Selma, Alabama. We have a lot of different pieces to our collection and we, uh, we talk a lot about innovation and invention and creativity when we, uh, when we push our collections and resources out to educators. So you'll hear about, about that today. And I'm Melissa Fry. I work for the Henry Ford Museum, but I actually live in Westchester County, New York. Um, and I'm a lifetime New Yorker and former New York City school teacher. I work with Olivia specifically on one of our educational programs, which is called Invention Convention Worldwide. Um, it inspires the next generation of inventors, entrepreneurs, and innovators, and um, has free curriculum that culminates in an opportunity to present your own inventions at a competition. And we are K through 12. So um, we run the gamut of all ages through within um, school age children. Great. So what we thought we'd do for you this afternoon is to share with you some of our educator resources that are housed on our educator platform and community called InHub. And we'll show you what that is, how to access it, and what are some of the components within it. And then as Melissa mentioned, she'll share with you a bit more about one of the programs that falls under the InHub umbrella and how you can get involved in that. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and Melissa and Abby, if you wouldn't mind um, keeping an eye on the chat. If anybody has questions as we're going through, please feel free to throw questions in the chat and we will answer them. So let me share here. Okay. So this is the front end of our uh, website, our, our InHub website. And as you can see here, it's a community built by educators for educators. And we mean that very seriously. We do take into account educator feedback. We work with advisory groups of teachers. Um, and we also, we also use, I just use the word teachers, but we actually use the word educators very intentionally because we don't just mean classroom teachers. We mean anyone who reaches children, adults, um, if you're teaching anyone anything, we consider you an educator for our purposes. So uh, want, we want to make this an, an inclusive community as well. Um, you'll see here the 7,500 uh, number, which is outdated at this point. We're over 9,000 members of InHub. And no matter where you are, you can create a free InHub account and get access to everything that's here. And so I will... Um, jump right into the platform here, but if you are interested in in creating an account and accessing some of the resources you'll see today, um, you can click this join for free button and it'll ask you to fill out a few things just for our uh, recording purposes. Some things like uh, where do you teach? What do you teach? Um, what what age ranges? What, um, what subject areas? That kind of thing. And it's just for our collection purposes so we can see who we're reaching. But once you have an account and you log in, you will uh, be hit with this dashboard and that'll give you some options about what you can do. So I'll go through these really quickly, but the, the bulk of what I would like to share with you today is in our learning management system. Not everything's in the learning management system, but if any of you are familiar with Cahoots, the Henry Ford does have a Kahoot channel. Um, Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> um, so the, the Kahoot channel includes games about our invention convention program, introducing some of those concepts. Uh, it also includes just fun little games about the Henry Ford itself and some of the, the primary artifacts we have, like the Rosa Parks bus, um, the Abraham Lincoln chair, that kind of thing. So if you're just curious about what kinds of things we have in the museum, you can take a look at that. Um, we also have a, a, the Innovation Atlas, which is a data visualization tool that maps out barriers to innovation across the country. And this research and this data is our what we call our North Star, why we do the work that we do. And it explains or kind of shows us where in the country 
where there are opportunities to practice innovation skills and innovation mindsets, and where there are some barriers to those things. And it can be anything from demographics to um, maybe there aren't uh, there aren't organizations or schools providing these kinds of opportunities in in particular areas. But it's kind of a, a neat exercise to put in your own zip code and see where you fall. Um, we also have a Facebook community here that you can join and get access to uh, upcoming things that are happening. But let's jump into the curriculum resource library here. And this will take you to our learning management system, which is where the bulk of what we have to offer is stored. So when we were designing InHub, we wanted to make sure we were addressing a wide range of educators who are looking for different things, because we know not everything fits every circumstance. So if we scroll down here, um, actually, before I do that, I'll just point out a couple of things that can help you find resources that are relevant for you. So we have a keyword search at the top of this page um, that will pull up anything in the LMS that is relevant for, or re related to your search terms. And then if you're looking for a particular grade band, um, you can find, you can sort by those here. There are roughly 600-ish resources within InHub, so there's quite a bit to sift through. So sometimes these filters can help. So if you're just looking for a little bit of uh, content or a new story or something to infuse into an activity that you're doing or a lesson that you're, you're teaching, we have a couple of options for you. So I mentioned that we have uh, 26 million artifacts, about 125,000 of those are digitized. So if you go to the Henry Ford's website, and I'll put this link in the chat in a second, um, you can search our digital collections and pull up some of our most common artifacts and some others that, will, uh, that are not on display. And you can find out about 50 words worth of context for each of these. Well, we found out that when educators are using these things in their classroom, they might want a bit more context around them. So we've created artifact spotlights for some of the most commonly asked after resources or uh, artifacts and stories. And we've put together a couple pages of context and history for each of these. So if you're looking for a little bit more, um, this is where you would come. The other smaller piece of content that we have are these Innovation Nation clips. Uh, some of you may be familiar with our Innovation Nation TV show, which is airing on CBS on Saturdays. That TV show is actually filmed on the Henry Ford's campus. And we've clipped, we've taken clips from each of the 10 seasons that exist. And we've pulled out three to five minute clips from each episode uh, that tell stories from our collections, but also that tell stories of young, especially young people um, creating an invention and, and innovations right now. So as you sift through these, you'll see we, we have some historic stories, but also we have uh, more contemporary stories like Algae Girl, um, the inventor of Auto-Tune, and we have an episode or a story focusing on drones. So some things that are more relevant to your students, perhaps, or the, uh, the things that are relevant in their lives. And so we've taken those kind of foundational pieces, the artifact spotlights and the video clips, and embedded them into everything else that we offer including our classroom and field trip resources, which uh, are intended to be used by anybody. You don't have to come to the Henry Ford for a physical field trip to get something out of these resource guides. They're really just ways to help you think about how you can embed some of these concepts of innovation and invention that you see across our collections in your classroom or in your education setting. And then if you want a bit more, if you want a deeper dive into some of these concepts, then you can explore our curriculum along the left-hand side here. And I won't go through each of them just for the sake of time here, but I wanted to focus on the Invention Convention curriculum because you'll hear a bit more about that program from Melissa in a second. So if you were to click on this curriculum, this one, just like the others, is split up by grade band. So there's a little bit of differentiation in here based on age and grade level. In uh, the first, document that you'll see here is the curriculum overview. And for this particular curriculum, this, this one builds invention and problem solving skills. So if you click on the overview, you'll see um, that we organize our curriculum by invention step, which goes along with the program that Melissa will talk about in a second. 
Um, but as you look at the curriculum overview here, you'll see an introduction. So thinking about what is invention in the first place? How do we define that? How can students wrap their heads around that concept? And then the other big piece of this program is the invention logbook. So this is something that students will keep track of throughout the entire invention process, all the way through to creating a prototype and presenting about that invention. So that's a pretty key piece as well. But like all of our curriculums, if you already have a great lesson plan for identifying problems, you don't necessarily have to use the one in this curriculum, um, but this is there to support you. And then you can pick which, which other lessons, maybe you have a gap, maybe you don't have a good lesson for designing an invention, or maybe you want something to help students learn about testing their invention and getting feedback. Um, so you have some options here. Um, and then you can see each of the lesson plans is broken out here. So you can click on one and download it, read through it, preview it. There are also some worksheets and PowerPoints that go along with some of these that are just additional resources for you as you're working through these lessons. I know the focus of today is STEAM um, and that cur curriculum is really STEAM focused, STEM focused, but we do have some other curriculum as available as well if you're looking for something a little bit different. Um, we have a learning framework called Model I that's about building an innovative mindset. So how, how can you become more empathetic and more collaborative? Uh, how can you get better at defining problems and that kind of thing? So it's just a slightly different approach um, to a similar, a similar subject area alongside of invention. Um, and then the other thing I will show you on our learning management system are our professional development courses and offerings. So we have developed uh, eight online courses for educators about different topics that are relevant to educators right now. So things like culturally responsive teaching, um, community-based learning, social and emotional learning. And these all pull in artifacts from the Henry Ford's collection, our learning framework, and they also address some um, some programs that we offer as well. So as you, if you log into InHub, because you're all based in New York, you won't see all of these courses available to you. Um, because we are based in Michigan, we are able to offer all of these courses to Michigan educators at no cost. If you're in a different state or a different country, some of these courses will be available at a, at a cost. So each one is $75, or you can bundle two for 100. Just wanted to mention that. Um, you won't have the same view as I do now, but you do have access to two, two of the courses, two of the eight for free. So one of them is this activating an innovative mindset one that's about our Model I framework. And then this is the other free one, bringing invention education to your classroom that will pull in the invention convention curriculum that I just mentioned and addresses how you can get involved with the invention convention worldwide program and competition which Melissa will go over. So this is a great place to start if you want to start doing invention education with students. Uh, it tells you what that is, what that concept is, why it's important, um, and then what's involved with embedding this in an education setting. Um, and then just as I mentioned, the curriculum is organized along invention process steps. We've broken down this course along, along those steps as well. So you can identify and define what each of these steps means in the invention process and what kind of work you can be expecting to look for from students as they work through these steps. And so we've pulled in actual student examples um, from invention convention participants across the country. So you can see, you know, when we mention an invention logbook, you can see what that looks like and what you can kind of look for with from students. And then uh, this last section here is about planning your invention convention program. You can use the curriculum, you can use the, you can do this course, whether or not you wanna participate in an invention convention, but there are benefits to participating in the program. And so this last module will help you plan that program a little bit and get started. But you're lucky today because Melissa's here to actually talk you through that process. 
So um, Melissa, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Olivia. So I'm just gonna share my screen and tell you a little bit more about Invention Convention Worldwide. And let me just put it into slideshow mode. So Invention Convention Worldwide is a K-12 STEM education program focusing on invention and entrepreneurship. So we do use the an acronym STEM-E that really incorporates the fact that we're doing science, technology, engineering, and math, but also invention and entrepreneurship. Um, this is a free program. Olivia just showed you uh, ways that you can find the curriculum. And what makes Invention Convention different from some other competitions is one thing is it's free. You can implement it in your classroom or after school program immediately. And we don't give students problems to solve, which is very important. We teach them problem identification skills and help them to find problems in their own communities, in their own lives that need to be solved, that they feel need to be solved. And then- hey, Melissa, them, yeah. sorry, um, it, or do you think you're sharing your screen? Are oh, you planning am I not? To share your screen? Nope, I just want to make sure you you did if okay. uh, that was your plan. Okay, thank you for letting me know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back, stop sharing, share. So we don't usually use Zoom, so it's a little bit different for us. Um, are you able to see the screen now? Yes. Okay, and are you able to see this slide? Yep, it's in slide okay. right now. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for letting me know. Otherwise, I'd just be droning on and on. <laughs> so yeah, so we want students to find problems um, through their own lens of lived experiences. So making it culturally relevant and applicable to their real lives, finding problems that are meaningful to them, that affect their families, their communities, or themselves, and work through a seven-step invention process. So just a little bit more. This program is hands-on in real world. The curriculum is free. We offer both um, asynchronous professional development, which Olivia showed you, and we also have live professional development workshops. And I will share with you um, after this, you'll receive some emails with information on how you can join one of those live professional development workshops to learn how to implement this program into your into your school or our after school program, if you would like. While we offer a, a, um, we offer events at the state and national levels for some states, we also just give you the tools so that you can do this in your own program. You can put on your own invention convention, you know, at the school or after school level, at the community level. We you have the opportunity, and students will have an opportunity to come to the board to present their. Um, their inventions, if that is so desired, but it's not a requirement of the program by any means. And our program is um, turnkey. So all of those lesson plans are ready to plug and play into your um, programs immediately. If you work in a public school, they are ready and aligned to next generation science standards and common core. They include op opportunities for enrichment or differentiation, including to um, if you are teaching virtually. And they can be handed right into any principal or um, administrator that's needed. The program is flexible. It can be done in as little as six weeks or as long as 12 to 18 weeks anywhere at home, in the classroom, in an after school program, or independent study. Um, we ask students to go through a seven step invention process and also document every step of their way. So we're integrating writing into, um, into STEM as well. Our seven step invention process is very much like design thinking or the engineering design process, but it's through the lens of invention. So starting with identifying their own problems and then working through this process of design, iterating, testing, and redesigning as needed. While it's written in a linear way, this process is, you know, back and forth, and um, you know, it, it's not a linear process when you are inventing or designing. Again, you can have school fairs. We do offer some state competitions. If you are living in Western New York in the Buffalo area, 
We do have an in-person competition that takes place there at the Science Museum. But if you live anywhere else in New York State, we do have a virtual competition that students are welcome to join, as well as our national competition, which takes place on the floor of the Henry Ford, which allows students to present their inventions alongside some of the greatest inventions of all time. And very important, um, some of our impact numbers is that this program really appeals to female inventors. That idea to be able to help others and help community members really resonates, resonates with female students as well as students who are from those um, areas of lower socioeconomic areas where they're seeing more problems. It really empowers students to take action and solve some of the problems that they are seeing. And you don't have to wait until you're grown up to do that. You can start helping people right away. And I'm gonna stop here. I know we gave a whole lot of information at once and I just wanna see if we have any questions about anything that we presented. I see Olivia put a link to our Invention Convention program. That's our, uh, our landing page, but we do have lesson plans um, at every grade level that show you how to implement this program into your own classrooms or after school programs. Happy to take any questions or even just have a conversation. We'd love to know where in New York or um, outside New York you are all located if, you, if you're if um, you willing to share. I know that we had one person share that they're from the Bronx, but I'd like to, to know, know where you are. We are in the Bronx. Awesome, Irene. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm a close neighbor just north of you guys. Brooklyn. Yay, Anna. That's awesome. I That's where I, when I taught, I taught in Park Slope area at um, MS88. So nice to see some of um, my Brooklyn friends. Oneonta. Awesome. Love to see that. Thanks so much. And we will be following up with um, an email with links and um, more information if you'd like to get involved. We're happy to help you with that. All right. So no one, if no one has any questions, I also have a survey um, in case you would like to just give us some feedback. So let me put that in real quick. As well, I just wanted to share... Here is, I can't multitask sometimes when I'm uh, when I'm talking. Sorry, everyone. I'll do one thing at a time. All right, here we go. So here is, almost. here is the survey. If anyone wanted to, to share just some feedback, or if you have certain topics that you're also, you know, interested in hearing from us, we're happy to get an idea of that. Uh, we also have a conference coming up uh, at the network. When I say coming up, it's at the end of April. So it's actually a long time away, but <laughs> our registration is open. And so I just want to share that with you all as well. And Abby, is that the conference that's taking place in Albany? Yeah, so this the location is Albany. Um, the conference is a culmination of three conferences. It's called Empower Youth Success. Uh, the, the Schools Out Make It Count conference section of it is going to be the STEAM focus. So it's a really great conference where um, it's very hands-on. Uh, there was a lot of interactive um, sessions last year, and it was just a lot. It was a lot of fun. It was great experience. Just if you have, if you want some ideas on STEAM programming, um, so that's take a look at that if you have the chance as well. Um, after this session, I think you know Melissa shared that she was going to send some resources, so I will share a folder with all of you. Um, and so that will just have those resources uh, linked to the recording of this if you just want to look after that as well. 
and the um, the survey in case you you miss it today. But thank you all so much for coming. I'm gonna stop.